Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. Faith on Friday Presents is all about highlighting, inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And today, of course, is no different. You know, it's the new year, so everyone's trying to start their business and their diets, but that's neither here nor there. I want to introduce you to H. Cortez Springer, who is an online entrepreneur, and he's going to talk to us about businesses, getting it started, and what it all looks like. Hi, Cortez. How are you? Hey, Ricky. I'm doing well. How about you, guys? I'm doing good. Happy New Year, my friend. Likewise, and uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate you coming on. So, Cortez, we got a lot to talk about because it's yeah. the new year. And like I said in the intro, people are starting their businesses and their diets. But we're not going to talk about that till you know, February. So talk to me about what is going on in business in 2023. What can we look for? Well, I think in business in 2023, uh, I think people are going to have to wrap their minds around a couple things, in, in my opinion. Uh, number one, uh, and this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings, but uh, video marketing, man, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for people to take their businesses to the next level. And I know people are shy about being on camera and all those kinds of things. But well, you know why? Because we have to get our hair together. Nobody... Nobody wants that. We don't want to be seen like that every day. And people are mean online. That is very, very true, my friend. Uh, there are some ways that you can do video marketing without actually having to be on camera yourself. Uh, but you do definitely don't want to miss out on the thing. As you notice, all of the big social platforms are moving to video, in particular, short form video. And those who are doing it are seeing benefits like uh, increased traffic to their website, which uh, results in increased sales and revenue and all of those things. So if you're not seeing any of those things, chances are you're not using video marketing. So that would be one of the things that I would say, figure out how to incorporate video marketing into your business. The other thing, which is equally as powerful, is digital products, right? I, I as a local business marketing professional, I, I deal with a lot of small local businesses and they love their referral model they like hey man people just find out about us through right. referrals and we're okay and that's good if you want to stay where you are ricky mm -hmm. but if you want to grow and scale your business right. then you really one of the fastest ways to do that is by creating digital products because digital products have a few benefits number okay. one it allows you to take your small local business global mm -hmm. because a digital product can be accessed all over the world. Well, uh, Cortez, I want to stop you here real quick. So for those of us that are watching and listening and are not as familiar with digital product, can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Sure. So your digital product would be anything that digitizes your message. So that could be a checklist. That could be an ebook. That could oh, be a okay. video course. That could be this podcast episode is actually mm -hmm. a digital product. Now, we know that it's going to be on these platforms at no cost, but it's a right. digital product nonetheless that mm -hmm. people can access all over the world. Wow. So if you're a small local business, mm -hmm. you already have an expertise in something. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in business. So true. Share <laughs> those things through digital products and you can mm -hmm. use those. Uh, products to generate new business. You can use those products to increase your revenue. Again, uh, raise your brand's wow. awareness uh, outside of your local market. So if I was encouraging or coaching anyone in business in 2023, if they're not doing video marketing, I would encourage them to get into video marketing. And if they don't have at least one or two digital products, I would sit mm -hmm. them down and uh, assess what their expertise is, who they serve, and how they could solve problems for that group of people with a digital product of some sort. Oh, man, that that's awesome. You know, and, and th that's something that people don't really think of. Like you said, you as small business owners, you get into business because you love the thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. And if we have 10 people buying, we're like, success. Yeah. <laughs> and we're done. But like you said, there are other things. What's your third thing? So the third thing I, I would say is uh, take social media seriously. Uh, mm. So you've got video marketing, and I kind of put that into to a separate group from 
social mm -hmm. media, although all of the social platforms now are incorporating video, if you're not aware, sure. uh, Twitter is now allowing you to do video. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, of course, has added video. And we know that Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram are really serious about video. And right. of course, the mother of them all right now, TikTok is all about that you know, 15 second to three minute video clip, right? That, that really yeah. locks people in. Mm -hmm. But taking your social media presence um, seriously can mm -hmm. also increase your business's searchability. Like if mm -hmm. you Google certain businesses, Today, you would see a lot of times their YouTube channel pop up, mm -hmm. their Facebook feed pop up, their Instagram profile pops up. Mm -hmm. And if you're not active on those platforms, you're just um, really yeah. giving up valuable real estate that can help people not only find you, but mm -hmm. also relate to you. And I use social media profiles when I'm dealing with online businesses to, to determine if this is in fact a real business, right? Because oh, that's a great point. I find you online, mm -hmm. okay, you look good, your website is okay, but I know what a clone website looks like too. So yeah. let me bounce over to your social media profile and take a look at, you know, your about me. Are you posting regularly and consistently? Are you active on there? Now that <laughs> sets me at ease when it comes mm -hmm. to dealing with a business that I've never heard of but I found them online. So yeah. you basically cool. just said, if it's not online, it's not real. So now everything online is true. See, mm -hmm. I knew right. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then it's got to be followed up with the social media because really um, when I go to your website, most mm -hmm. websites will have links to social media profiles. Right. I'm going to go to that, click on that social media profile icon. And I want to see that you're posting regularly and consistently. Mm -hmm. I want to see how other customers are engaging with your brand so on good. Those profiles. And mm -hmm. that sets me at ease and gives me a little bit more confidence to want to do business with you. So wow. um, video marketing, digital products, and take social media seriously. Wow. You can't do it yourself. Find it in your budget to hire someone to, to help right. you. See, now you just said I have to get dressed every day. And now, oh my gosh, the pain of it all. So if somebody is new in their business and they really like the idea of the digital marketing, having their digital product out there, where do you suggest somebody should start? Well, for me, uh, it, it starts with A, understanding who you are as an entrepreneur. Mm. Understand who you want to serve understand the problem that they have wow. and how you intend to solve it. Now, when it comes to solving that problem, it is, hey, I can do this thing for you. Mm -hmm. And that means you can bring me on location and I can just do whatever you need me to do. Right. But you also have a group of people that are do-it-yourselfers. So mm -hmm. they're saying, hey, I can't afford to hire you to do it for me. But if you gave me some instructions, I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident that I can do it myself. That's where right. your digital product, your ebook, or your video course, or your mm -hmm. checklist can really come in handy to serve right. those people. And then you mm -hmm. have yet another group of people who want to do it themselves, but mm -hmm. they want someone to really hold their hand. So that's the right. done with type of crowd. So mm -hmm. once you understand those things, one of my favorite hacks for uh, digital product creation is mm -hmm. something called PLR. Which stands yes. For label rights. Yes. Love PLR. <laughs> there is a private label rights product that has yeah. already created, has mm -hmm. already been written by someone who is equally as passionate about this thing as you. So they're a right. subject matter expert. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, Ricky, the framework is already there. Yeah. So one of yeah. the biggest challenges I have is I know what I want to teach. I know the outcome that I want to create, but mm -hmm. when it comes to putting together a curriculum or a framework or an outline, it's like, ah, oh, I want to pull out <laughs> the hair that's no longer here, uh, right? But uh, if I go to a PLR source yeah. on that same subject, then mm -hmm. I can usually go and buy a checklist and right. I can build an entire course from that checklist. Or I maybe love I it. And buy an ebook, and I can just look at the table of contents in that ebook. It's like, man, this is all of the stuff that I have in my head. That's what I meant. I'm not organized, like that's exactly what I want to teach these people. Right. So, 
And it's such an easy thing to do. And there are so many PLR websites that are out there. And and a lot of things that one, people don't know that PLR exists. Then Mm -hmm. they don't know they are fully customizable. Once you buy it, it is yours. And and it's everything from books, like you said, books, checklists, um, full courses that you Mm -hmm. can get, which is so neat. I think, uh, you know, here's my, my two cents of a hack, Fiverr. I yes. love yes. Fiverr. That's F I V E R R dot com. Fiverr has everything. Like you're saying, some people want to do it themselves. Some people want someone to hold their hand. I am the other person. Can somebody else do this and I can just buy it? Yeah. I am a consumer, not a creator. And yeah. Fiverr is is life for small businesses because it's inexpensive. But like you said, they have the expertise that mm-hmm. you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when we talked about that video marketing, like you can do a cartoonized whiteboard type video of your business. You don't have to be in it. Someone on Fiverr can take that and create that for you for less than a hundred bucks usually. And every video that you created, here's the power of video and people don't understand this. When videos are done right, it's like having a salesperson working for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It is so the truth. every time you have one of those videos created, it's going to bring awareness to your brand, right? It's going to uh, generate leads for your brand and mm-hmm. you should be able to convert those leads into customers and repeat customers. Right. But you don't have to be the attractive character of your brand, right? Wow. I call a Russell Brunson and he's always talked about um, one of the three main pillars of a solid brand is mm-hmm. an attractive character. And people often think, well, if I need an attractive character, it mm-hmm. has to be me. Right. Just, <laughs> trust and believe that flow from progressive has no ownership stake in flow. You better she say that. Progressive, but she and Lily from the at and commercials. Yeah, yeah. They, they are not owners, but they are the attractive character of those brands Mm -hmm. so you may have someone that works on your staff that is real photogenic energetic and bubbly and knows and believes in the company's message mission Mm -hmm. and vision that person can become the face of the brand but Mm -hmm. you absolutely must have video marketing going on in your business and particularly videos up on youtube Uh, i love Facebook. Facebook has been so good to me as a platform sure. mm-hmm. and, and with the exception of the few times that they put me in jail, right? And, and you went to Facebook time. jail? Yes, on a couple of occasions. I, I never was, got to go to jail. And listen, I had, uh, I was pushing a product at one point in the direct sales industry and every holiday season we experienced the most explosive growth ever because we did this great holiday promotion right. and guess who was in jail during 85% of this holiday no. promotion all of my business came from facebook at that time yeah. and it was a flat out mess so mm. i didn't experience the growth that i normally would that time of year but wow. i created workarounds as you know entrepreneurs we have to find a way oh, right? yeah Mm-hmm. It's, it's got to happen or it's got to happen, right? So that's I, exactly I went, right. You know, other people's pages and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but yeah, Facebook jail. And as much love as I it. love Facebook mm-hmm. and doing my videos and streaming live on Facebook, here's mm-hmm. the challenge when you're doing videos on Facebook versus YouTube. Okay. Facebook is what's called interruption marketing. Mm-hmm. You are not checking for my videos on Facebook. I just happened right. to scroll across your feed. And Mm -hmm. if my title is good, or if the freeze frame caught me in some weird, awkward facial expression, it might have caught your attention enough for you to stop and check in and see what I'm talking about. But you were not looking for it. YouTube, on the other hand, is a search engine. It is search-based marketing. So when people are finding you on YouTube, they're Mm -hmm. actually looking for you. And because they're looking for you, they're closer to a buying decision Mm. on Facebook. I wasn't on Facebook scrolling and I saw something and had my credit card out. Right. I'm on YouTube, (laughs) on the other hand, I'm about to buy something and I'm in the research phase. And if I find someone 
giving me the information I need about a particular product or wow, service that's good. I'm likely to purchase because I'm closer to a buying decision. So, that's true. You know, I was thinking, you know who else does that is Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And Pinterest yeah. is one of those platforms that people are sleeping on yeah. unless, of course, you're on it. And a lot of people think, oh, Pinterest is only for, you know, party platter ideas and bathroom mm -hmm. decoration. But right. it's everything. It's and everything. it's another one of those platforms, like you said, it's a search platform. If you are looking for it, you're looking to buy something. Yeah. And, you know? and they are one of the leaders in social commerce, meaning mm -hmm. they're allowing integrations with e-commerce platforms where you could literally buy right mm -hmm. inside of Pinterest and never mm -hmm. have to leave the platform. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's amazing that when you understand how to make that connection, you could literally be uh, pinning yeah. products in your e-commerce exactly. store by right there inside of Pinterest and never leave mm -hmm. a platform. And that's what you got to understand about these platforms. You want to be in alignment with what mm -hmm. they do, right? Mm -hmm. None of these platforms want you that's taking good. their eyeballs off of their platform. Right. Their site, even if only for a minute. Mm -hmm. None platforms want you to take eyeballs off of Facebook. Yeah, stay with or us. Stay YouTube. right here. No. <laughs> so that's why my videos go native to Facebook yeah. and they're native to YouTube. That's versus good. Versus putting them on YouTube, sharing the link on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Because shadow banning is real, right? Explain and shadow banning, sir. Shadow banning is when these platforms, no matter how many followers you have and how mm -hmm. engaged they are with you, mm -hmm. when you put something up that is out of alignment with the platform, wow. they will not show it. They'll show it to you and you'll think it's up and you'll think they're, you're getting the views and all of that stuff. No, shadow banning is real. Who think about it like knew? This. Think about it like this. Beyonce has a hundred million followers on Instagram, right? Yeah. Instagram showed her content to all hundred million people. Then I, as a business owner, as a corporation, mm -hmm. I would just go do business with Beyonce. Right. Then I would spend my money with Instagram sure. advertising. So they have to right. control the amount of visibility that you get on those platforms. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can make more advertising dollars on their platform than they can. That's it. Yeah. It's true. They're not as famous as Beyonce, yeah. right? <laughs> so they're yes. going to show Beyonce's content to a limited number of people. And if Beyonce mm -hmm. posts something that is that they really don't like or in agreement with or feel that mm -hmm. they can eat over, they're going to basically shadow ban it, meaning they're wow. going to to a small number of people just so that Beyonce feels that this content is oh my gosh old, but it's really not so does Beyonce know this do you think I mean I should call her don't you think yeah, I, I think someone uh, should hold on I'm her. gonna call her like no but I, I think she's okay uh and so is The Rock and Kevin Hart and Kim Kardashian like these guys are doing yeah. seven figure brand collabs per post or something like Isn't that, that it's Right? Yeah. But I bring that up to say that you have to understand the alignment of the mm. platform. Right. Facebook wants you to create content that's going to keep people on the platform mm -hmm. for a long period of time and get them to engage. Right. If you can wow. do that at a high clip, then they will help you become viral on their platform. So and what so let me so what you're saying is this. So if you put content on YouTube. All right. And, you know, when you, you and you know this, when you're putting your content on YouTube and it's up there and it gives you the share thing and it, you get shared on all these places. What you're saying is don't do that. Go to the actual like, say, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and post it there on its own. Don't share it from YouTube. Absolutely. No, no. So you do both. OK. The reason you share it from YouTube mm -hmm. is because it's going to create what's called a backlink. And okay. that's going to help YouTube say, you're saying to YouTube, yes, I'm trying to bring eyeballs to your platform. You see, I Got shared it on you. all of these different things. Mm -hmm. But because I know me sharing it on Facebook or Twitter, it's going to create a shadow ban effect. I know I'm sharing mm -hmm. it for that reason. I'm mm -hmm. not sharing it to get 
people on Facebook to see it because they're not. Got you. Now I have to wow. also share it natively on Facebook and mm -hmm. then do what Facebook wants me to do, which yeah. is share it inside of groups on Facebook to get wow. other people on Facebook to engage with it. Then Facebook yeah. says, okay, Cortez, I'm with you. You share some quality content. You're mm -hmm. getting other people across the platform to engage with this content. That's good to know. Share it with a bunch more people too. Wow, that is insane. So those of us, because I'm in that boat, I mm -hmm. didn't know shadow banning was a thing. I really didn't, you know, yeah. and you don't know until you know. So Cortez, with all the stuff that you do know, how did you get into this line of work, if you will? Well, I, I, I started uh, in direct sales, network marketing, MLM, them quote pyramid things, right? That, yeah. that people think is so illegal, right? And at, at 19 years old, I got introduced to that world for the first time. And oh, wow. when I tell you, I saw two things that changed my life. Mm -hmm. I saw somebody draw circles on the board and I learned the word residual income. And I was like, okay, that's a thing. I got to have it. However, what they did not tell me is that to be really successful in that world, mm -hmm. it's best if you have an outgoing personality that you can really connect with people mm -hmm. and strangers and befriend them and all of sure. that kind of stuff. But Ricky, mm -hmm. I am an extreme introvert. So I'm me, sorry, wait, what happened right now? I, I'm, I'm, you just I'm broke serious. my world. What do you mean I'm you're an extreme serious. introvert? I, if you put me in a room full of people, I will find myself a corner and I will be Cortez. equally okay chilling by myself. Like I, I, that, that has always been me. And that's why. Wow. So, so in that world, I was in the network marketing and direct sales world for 15 years with no success mm -hmm. outside Dang. of the person I was becoming on the inside. Mm -hmm. See, People don't realize about that industry. They understand that you're coming from an employee mindset into a business right. mindset. Mm -hmm. So they are really good at helping you change the way you think with their books and their yeah. videos. And their, back then, it was a tape of the week, a book of the month. And I was, oh I was really learning and getting into personal growth and self-development. So I wasn't making any money in the business. Right. But because of my growth as a leader, because of mm -hmm. my growth as a human, I was getting promotions and raises on my job. Wow. So the personal growth and self-development was working mm -hmm. on me. I just wasn't experiencing that in the business growth. And in 2015, two things happened. Mm -hmm. I got with a company that aligned with my vision and my mm -hmm. mission, what I wanted to accomplish. Something that I was passionate about was personal finance. Right. Then the person that I was in that business with was building their business on YouTube. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said, huh, look at there. He's doing videos mm -hmm. where he can present what he has to offer, build relationships with people, and don't have to worry about somebody talking back. I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can be by myself and talk to people. I'm down. I hear you. <laughs> uh, listen, that was the win for me, Ricky. So... Like the the same week I joined, I was mm -hmm. doing the presentation on video because right. I had already learned out. I was thinking about joining. I was really studying this guy, and his name is Brian Bean. He's he's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So I was studying him and his style and all that. I was like, okay, if I decide to join yet another one of these things, right? I had to tell right. my wife, this one is really, really, really the one, right? Because mm -hmm. oh yeah, because the oh, there's always the one. <laughs> I'm like, no, babe, this is really, really, this is really. it. <laughs> um, but I studied him and I learned the presentation. And the week after I joined, right. I was on YouTube building my channel and doing wow. presentations online. And mm -hmm. it, it took off, right? People took to the uh, the alter ego that I had created, right? Because right, I had right. somebody different to be mm -hmm. on video consistently. So yeah. as I started to build that brand and build my team and grow my organization, I really got all the way into how to do it online. So I learned mm -hmm. all of the YouTube tricks and the Facebook tricks and all of sure. these things. And people started asking me, man, what are you doing to blow up your 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 business? And I'm like, really? I'm just doing videos and I'm being consistent. I show up every That's day. That's it. Yeah. Get some value. 
and then I have a call to action at the end. That's and it. I didn't realize what, what I was doing was called attraction marketing, but that's what it was. Yeah. And I really leaned into learning that and, and becoming a master of that. Mm-hmm. And that was the beginning of me uh, ultimately wow. becoming a personal branding coach and online marketer. And then mm-hmm. in 2015, uh, 2020, uh, I really started looking at, because of the pandemic, sure. how many of our Black-owned businesses shut down and mm-hmm. never came back. Something like a little yeah. over 40% of them Crazy closed, about never it. come back. So mm-hmm. When I look at, okay, what did the businesses that survive do differently that the businesses that didn't survive do? And I'll yeah. tell you, it was largely because of their online presence. I believe so it. That's, that's insane. what led me to launching the digital marketing agency to mm-hmm. not only just help coaches and consultants, but to help these small business owners too uh, mm-hmm. build that's a true. strong online presence so that if the country shuts down again, you we'll have be ready. And you can email your, your customers and your prospects yeah. and the rest of what's going. You have a Facebook page that you can communicate with them on and let them know, mm-hmm. hey, we can't open this our is doors, happening. Yeah, we are open for delivery, right? In fact, which is so good. Discount if you uh, order for pickup today or whatever, they just didn't have the presence yeah. or systems to support them in this new age digital. Because who knew? Who knew this was all going to, you know, the world was going to shut down and people were, you know, it was going to be crazy for everybody. So Cortez, with all the things that you are and be and do, if someone wanted to work with you, how would they get in touch with you? I would tell you, uh, Ricky, I'm so proud of this new school of online entrepreneurship that we're launching. Uh, or we just recently launched. It's called Monetize My Life Academy. So mm. if they go to monetizemylifeacademy.com, they can test drive our system for $1 for the first seven days. And basically what this School of Online Entrepreneurship does, it gives you everything that you need to win in business from the tools, templates, training, resources, and support to mm. weekly engagement with myself and other entrepreneurs. If you have a business, We'll help you add some of these digital products to it. We'll help you maximize what you already have. If you don't have a business and you're looking to start, we can help you brainstorm some of the gifts and talents that you have and how you can build a business around something that you're already passionate about. And you have Mm -hmm. everything that you need to win in one place for one low monthly price. But we're more excited about the support that we give because Mm -hmm. entrepreneurship can be very lonely. Uh, especially yeah, it is. <laughs> you don't have people in your corner who understand that journey mm-hmm. um, and you start telling your friends and family that you're about to start a business yeah and, and, and they'll like, tell you how crazy you are and <laughs> why would you and no one's ever done this and what makes you think you can succeed and blah 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 I'm just saying you know don't yes. ask me how I know just trust me it's a thing <laughs> Don't worry, if you all did not get all that information, we're going to have it all in the description below. And it's important to reach out. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like and share because we want to make sure that we're getting up there and out there as well. So again, like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget. Cortez, my friend, before I let you go, however, (laughs) so we have to play a game. The game is called This or That. Pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things. And you, my friend, off the top of your head, you just decide which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? Let's do it. All right. (laughs) McDonald's or Burger King? Mickey D's. Oh, yes. Thank you. Batman or Captain America? Batman. Yeah, yeah, DC Batman. Billionaire, yes. right? <laughs> yes. I love it. Going to the movies or movies at home? Going to the movies, man. Nothing like movie popcorn. Oh, you are so bridging to my choir right now. <laughs> Make the call or send the text? Send the text. Okay. Snickers or Three Musketeers? Snickers, man. It's the three musketeers are just a knockoff without the nuts, right? <laughs> I've never heard that before, and you're probably right. <laughs> dressing up or dressing down? 
I like to be comfortable, so dressing down. Okay. Yeah. Cats or dogs? Can I say neither? Uh no, yes. my wife is a dog. Yes, my wife is a my wife is a dog person and she's kind of helped me to to, to be, be a dog person. So I would say dog for the kids. Okay, nice save. I like that. Thanksgiving or New Year's Eve? Thanksgiving, man. Thanksgiving. Yeah. About the food. I understand. <laughs> Fry it or grill it? Uh, at this stage of my life is grill it or air fry it. Right. Wow. You just <laughs> told everyone how old you are. Cause I know a hundred years ago, we'd have been like fry everything. I'm telling you and deep fry it at that. That's right? right. Double deep fry. What are you talking about? <laughs> Morning person or night owl? Morning person now, like, like I, I saw a Facebook post that said, I don't know if 40 is a new 30, but 9 PM is the new midnight. So <laughs> morning person. Uh, I, I love it. That is so true. And finally, what's your favorite Olympic sport? A favorite Olympic sport is, is probably the floor, floor routine and gymnastics, okay. men or women. That's so great. Well, I appreciate you being at your best here and sharing your gift with us. It means everything. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Cortez. No problem. And thank you for having me. And don't forget, like, subscribe and share this with somebody because Ricky is doing a great work and more people need to know about it. I appreciate what you said. And don't forget, if you or someone you know has an inspiring story or a topic we absolutely have to talk about, or you have a small business that likes to, that would need to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com. Click on connect and send me an email. I want to hear from you. So that's it for this time, but don't worry. We'll see you next time on Faith on Friday Presents.